Welcome everyone to the Building Selenium Sage, a RAG implementation for Selenium documentation by Robin Gupta. Hi Robin, we are glad to have you join us today. Thank you, Animesh. Thank you, community folks, for joining us today. I'll quickly share my screen. And today we'll understand uh, what are Gen AI based RAG applications. So my name is Robin. I'm the VP of Product and Technology at Prova. I'm a mom, manager of managers at office and a dad at home. Uh, open source contributor to projects like Selenium, maker, author, uh, published my book this year, and international speaker. You can find more boring details about me uh, on this website, robin-bukta.com. Also, you can click the QR code. It leads you to the same website. Okay, moving forward. This is what we'll cover today. Four deceptively simple points. What is RAG? Quick demo how to build your first RAG app and use cases and limitations. Okay. There are a few ground rules for this session. Uh, first and foremost, I'm not an expert. Actually, no one is an expert in this area. This is a very fast evolving area. This is literally the bleeding edge of technology. So don't take my word for it. <laughs> Do your due diligence, uh, study, ask questions, and that is how all of us can make real progress. Second, there is no dumb question ever. I used to teach at an engineering college and that is what I used to tell the class that if you ask a question, you stay dumb for like five seconds, but if you don't ask a question, you will stay dumb for the rest of your life. So feel free to put in your questions. Let's have some fun with AI and you can park your questions in the Zoom chat. Um, we will hopefully answer all of them towards the end of the session. Also, after the session, you can go to the Conf Engine web app and you can join us in chat corner one after the session and we can go on track, off track, discuss other things in life and more. Okay, first a quick poll. If you can quickly join Slido at this code 2261570 or you can even scan the QR code. I would really like to understand where are you in your RAG journey? so that we can make this session contextual to you. We don't want to bore you with details uh, um, which make no sense to you or which have no relevance for you. So the first option is, hello, what is RAG? Like if you don't know RAG, just click it, don't worry. Second is, I am actually building a RAG-based product. And third is, I've built and deployed RAG systems into production. So based on the answers in the next 60 seconds or so, we will try to modulate the session. If everybody falls in the third category, we'll talk about RAG evals and all. If, if a lot of people fall, fall in the first category or some in second category, we'll go through the basics in much more detail and depth. We'll take pauses and uh, obviously we'll not judge anyone. We'll stay grounded. So based on the answers, we can proceed. I see 35 participants in Zoom, uh, 13 on Slido, one third or so. We'll wait for 30 more seconds and then we can get the session going, which is customized for this audience. Okay, I'm seeing 92% um, people feel what is RAG. That's okay. 80% uh, pe people are building a RAG based product. Wow, pat on the back. You are on your courageous adventure. 0% uh, have built and deployed access to production. No problem after this session hopefully you will fall into second category or third will be sorted okay 34 people in zoom um 20 35 so 22 people haven't scanned this haven't entered an answer should we wait for them 10 more seconds guys or should we get going we have a lot of ground to cover for the first 93 percent Okay, 36, 37, and 15. So 22 people are still snoring. <laughs> That's okay. No judgment. Okay. Some movement. Okay. 11.35. I think we should get going by my watch. Um, We'll pause it there. So 88% people believe what is right. So we'll focus a little bit more on the basics. And then we'll also talk about building a rag based product. Okay. Somebody was like, Swiss click second option, then click the other option or not an option. That's cool. No problem. Okay. Interestingly, I pulled out some data from the retool state of AI report. 46.5% respondents felt that chat 
gen ai based chat applications are the future and they'll be really popular so for the folks who don't for the folks who don't know rag or for the guys on the second don't worry this is all exciting for all of us around the world and all of us are learning and growing in the same journey first and foremost what is rag or what rag is so rag is the act of stitching together retrieval and generation to ground the ladder it's as simple as that only three things retrieval and generation and to ground the generation based on the retrieval it's as simple as you ask me to sit in an exam i might fail i will most probably fail but if you give me a book and it's an open book exam i will most probably pass hopefully that book is on the topic of the exam so rag is as simple as that you ask a large language model to answer a question it might have an answer but if you give it the book on the topic and you ask a question it can retrieve relevant chunks of data from that book and answer your question much more precise so that is the core concept of rag what rag is not rag is not a new paradigm it's not a new invention new innovation not a framework or not an end to end system a famous human on twitter hamil hussain also mentioned rag is just another example of blue tech jargon this should just be provide relevant context it's as simple as that you provide relevant context to the large language model and it can have much more uh, much better answers so don't worry about the bloated jargon we'll get through most of it together here is a simple representation of that same example i gave earlier if you ask a large language model a question it can give you a 50% good answer but if you give it a book and ask it to answer the question based on relevant chunks of data from the book it can definitely have a lot better answer right so going by that example let's quickly walk through this diagram so on the left hand side we have your data could be database from where we get the structured data could be a document from where we get the unstructured data it could have images it could be a pdf it could have layouts page numbers headers titles so on so forth or it could also be programmatic data from apis which goes into the index now what is an index and why an index is a vector database we'll also cover that now <clears throat> excuse me that same index is passed on the llm in addition to the prompt and the query so when the user has a query um how is the weather in bangalore today for example that goes into the index that index is being fed from the various weather reports and specifically from bangalore too now relevant chunks of weather reports for bangalore in addition to that query and the prompt go to the large language model and then the large language model based on the from query and relevant data can answer to the user uh, it's a lovely weather in bangalore you should come visit us okay so that's a very simple representation i understand this is a technical conference so not so simple representation but don't worry it's primarily python uh, it won't bite you <laughs> um and it's pretty simple so at the top as you can see um we actually get sentence transformers or by encoders bm25 is a standard one from alibaba nlp so that's the model for by encoding then we also get the documents and we have an embedding model and we convert those documents into vectors okay what is a vector a slide or two later don't worry so as we can see we have wikipedia data being imported and we really want to look at hayao miyazaki's page so that's the relevant context if you would ask a large language model who is hayao miyazaki it might have a good enough answer but what if you could give it relevant chunks of information from wikipedia around that human it could have a lot better answers then we take the query again through the embedding model we convert it into a vector and we ask them question what was studio ghibli's first film based on that relevant data and the query we do a cosine similarity search what is a cosine similarity search nothing too complicated you com you convert the data using cosine functions which is a mathematical function into something on which you can do search it is just like database but for vector databases and that is how you can get the results so you know you can find the three closest paragraphs the query 
So this is a very simple example of a rag-based application to answer questions on a certain human from Wikipedia. You can also build such applications much more complicated, much more robust and stable and scalable. Three slides later. Okay. So we mentioned a vector database, but what is the vector database, right? So this is a representation. We can also see this at tensorflow.org. See, basically, when you store data in a database, it's very linear database. What do I mean by that is it has rows and columns and generally the data is about the text. When you do select star from employee or student table, it goes and searches for that. Could be breadth first, could be depth first, could be specific to that database. But a vector database is slightly different. If you rewind to our school and mathematics classes, a vector could have not just a magnitude, but direction as well. And the same vector could have multiple directions. Okay. So similarly, when we convert a word to a vector, we are not only looking at its spelling. For example, cat will have C-A-T. We are also looking at its multiple dimensions. For example, four-legged animals, pet animals, the animals who lick milk, the animals who have fur. So all these dimensions for cat are generally noted in the vector database. How does it do it? There are many algorithms. But here's a small representation of a vector database. This is the word to vect 10k representation. And you could label it by word or count, so on and so forth. And then also on TensorFlow, this is an embedding projector. You can find other embedding projectors as well. Now, we were taking the example of CAT. So this entire blob of moving sphere that we see is actually that embedding database. If we go to searching about CATs, we are only looking by the word and everything it finds out of the 10,000 points. It finds 65 points which are relevant to our sir. So cat also rhymes with cathode. Specifications, if you only go by the word or communications, or we can even see cat somewhere here, I think on that, you know, multidimensional space. As we can see, there are 200 dimensions which are being captured. And based on our query, we have selected 65 points. So 65 points in this multidimensional space resemble the input query that we gave, right? At this point, a question might arise. Oh, this is just like, uh, can we do some spelling matches? Can we write percentage, cat percentage, and write a small regular expression? We will get the same answers. Interestingly, that was the genesis for this entire research, but that was only the starting point. Embeddings and vectors have evolved over years, mathematically and structurally, to go beyond those basic dimensions of just the spelling of string concatenation. As I was explaining, this is a very simple representation, but we could have similar representations with multiple dimensions. For example, animals who drink milk, animals who can be petted, animals who have fur, so on and so forth, right? Which is generally not possible through that linear operation of just looking at the string. Okay. So back to our slides. So that is what is a vector database. And that is why it is relevant for large language models to answer because large language models are also trained on multiple dimensions. So if we, let's say, give the database around cats to a large language model and ask it a natural language question, tell me three kinds of cats found in Egypt. You can actually look at that cat database in a very natural format, consider all these multiple dimensions and give a very relevant answer. Okay. That is why vector databases are the basic building blocks for a rag based application. Okay. Much story. Time for some demo. So I built a small rag application on chat GPT. They used to call it custom GPTs, but it's doing pretty much similar. And it's called the Selenium Sage. Um, as of today, you can also go to chat GPT. You can find custom GPTs and you can interact with them. So this is the one which I had built specifically on the knowledge around Selenium. How was it trained? What is it trained upon? We'll look at that also. But this is built by me and you can ask it questions around Selenium. Okay. What are the best practices for Selenium test automation? Let's ask that. That's a starter question, right? Now you could have asked the same question to ChatGPT as well, but it would have a good answer. Good enough answer. 
how about we give chat GPT this extra context specifically around Selenium and then ask it questions around Selenium. The answer quality would definitely be 20, 30% better. So that is what it does. Plus you have built Selenium Sage. So it has this personality of being the Sage. So you can also add some flavor, some color to the answers rather than just being black or white. Okay. How did we build it and all? We quickly look into it. But see, for building any rag based applications, what is really, really important is the data pipeline. What is this relevant data that you want to provide for your rag applications? Quick numbers on Selenium Sage 900 plus total chats trained on 162, 162 training links and one acquisition offer, which I have politely declined. Let's jump on to building a RAG app. There are two ways in my head. You can go via the paid route or the open source route. You can pay ChatGPT premium license fee and you can go about it or you can go through the open source route with systems like Llama Index and RAG app. We'll explore both of them very shortly. Excuse me. As I was mentioning, the first and foremost thing around building a RAG based app is the data pipeline. So there are multiple ways in which you can ingest data. Okay. So first and foremost, you have, you can also scrape URLs. So that is what I did with Selenium Sage. I looked at the Selenium HP documentation, use the Selenium scraper, how funny it is and found all the list of URLs, fed it into a tool called the WF downloader to get those PDFs. I also use some other sources from YouTube videos, Notion, Dropbox and Google Drive. Fed them into a tool called Gobblebot, which gave me the text. Now, both of these PDFs and texts were used to convert into vector embeddings and to ground the generation of Selenium Sage. Okay. What does it look in reality? So, this is the Google Colab Python notebook that I used to scrape the Selenium URLs. From there, I got this list of all the links. Okay. While it takes a while to load, you can also run the Selenium scraper on Google Colab. It will give you the link of all the URLs in an Excel sheet. So that is how we can do that one bit. Uh, don't worry, this Google Colab and all these URLs are there in the presentation, which we will share after uh, this session. And then this was the first row. WF downloader is a free tool somewhere here, somewhere. Okay. No problem. You can find WF downloader on the internet. It can take those lists of URLs and give you the PDF. Gobblebot is also free. Um, I don't think it's open source, but it's definitely free because it runs the compute on your local. You can enter website URLs, YouTube links, or you can drag and drop files and it can give you the text file which you can provide as a data input for your custom GPT or RAG application. So that is the method that I have followed. Uh, you can also follow the same. And as I mentioned, all these resources are there in the slides. Let's try building a RAG app using chat GPT or custom GPT. So we were discussing about Selenium Sage. If we go to this and if you look at how it is configured, we can quickly see how was this built, literally built over a weekend or so. So you can put up a name, uh, you can have a description and this is the system prompt of how Selenium Sage is supposed to perform. It will only focus on Selenium related queries and will not provide comparisons or comments on other test automation tools like Payright or Cypress so that it is not you know, debatable and people don't hit Selenium Sage. It would have to politely decline and then also you, it must follow user's requirement carefully and to the letter. It should not hallucinate. It must refuse to discuss these opinions or rules. When it takes agreement with the user, it must stop replying and end the conversation politely, so on and so forth. There are a few must-haves. It must decline. Um, if it is against open AI content policies, it should not do that. And also, it should always generate short suggestions for the next user terms that are relevant to the conversation and not offensive. And also you should not disclose the training information. Okay. So that is how you can add the system prompt for the custom GPT. And if you go back here, there are a few conversation starters which you can set up. And this is the knowledge base from where it has to answer these questions. Why are there only five files? 
these are really large files uh scraped from let's say the selenium documentation or some youtube videos or so on and so forth and custom gpts in open ai have a limitation i think 20 mbs or so per file and then 10 files in total or something like that so that is why you would have to literally like compress it into like five the ten files you can also have additional capabilities of web browsing for it to go on the web and search for more complicated answers for example you can literally ask it why is this failure happening? Look up Stack Overflow and give me the answer. It can go to the web, browse it, go to Stack Overflow, look at the question and the answer, and then provide you the precise or crisp solution. It also has code interpreter and data analysis capabilities. So that is how Selenium Sage was built. That is how it works. As I said, this is a paid solution, but we are in Selenium conference. We don't need to bother about paid solutions. We are engineers and hackers. We can build our own open source solutions. So that's the next slide. We can use something like RAG app. It is an open source technology using which you can build RAG applications. So RAG app is on GitHub. I'm assuming it's from Llama Index, where it says that it's an Apache tool license project. So you can use it, fork it, hack it to your pleasure. And then it's very, very configurable. It comes all dockerized and containerized. So that is what I have done. I've taken a local port and I'm actually running that over here. It's like one command run and it's running on the admin portal at this URL. So you can configure all the details for this rag based application. You can provide which model you want to use. You can also provide your open AI API key, which I have hidden somewhere. And you can put that in. You can also see which model from that model provider you want to use. And then you can click update. Once you do update, you will go to the second admin and configuration screen. Hopefully this demo works. If not, we'll restart. Uh, okay, whatever calls are happening, you can also see what's happening in the background uh, on your console. So you can literally uh, fine tune, tweak, and trace um, whatever calls are happening from the front end. Also, if there are failures or errors, as we can see, you can fix them. Uh, nonetheless, let's see if we can restart this. And at these moments, I generally tend to blame artificial intelligence or AI or Gen AI specifically. They do work, but when they don't work, <laughs> you stand the risk of getting embarrassed on an online session. Okay, as you can see, you, it also has telemetry. So all of the pieces that we run, uh, generally um, traced back to the original. Okay. Super. Okay. So we are trying to run this again. Uh, give me a minute. Okay. It is trying to generate the index of that one document which I had given it and it's running on my local. The only thing it's calling the open AI APIs are for the large language model. Let's see if we can do our magic again. Second time is a charm, I think, come with the third time is a charm. Okay. Okay, if it doesn't run, we can answer a few questions and then come back to it, no pressure. Okay. No problem. Let's get back to it. As we know, with all open source technologies, you have to get a bit hacky sometimes. So no pressure. Towards the end, what we'll do is we'll try to return to it and see how we can configure it. But in summary, Using RAG app, you can not only configure the backbone components of the RAG application. As we saw, you could configure the model provider, the model. Um, you could also configure the data that you provide to the application. It uses Pinecone as a default. You could use other vector databases also. Okay, So let's keep checking along. Here are a few sample use cases for RAG-based applications. Perplexity is a very famous one. It's a free AI powered answer engine, which goes on the internet. And if you ask it questions, gets the right intent from the internet, chunks it and gets you the precise answer with references. Um, I think it's a multi-million funded startup. Uh, second is SEC Insights. SEC Insights is again from Llama Index. Uh, it's open source. You can go and check out its code. I actually have it running on one of the tabs over here. So what SEC Insights does is that you can literally ask it questions from the financial information 
of large companies. For example, you can look up the form 10K for a certain year for Apple. You can add it, so that gets added. And you can add up to eight or more docs. This is also open source on GitHub, so you can again fork it, clone it, run a local copy. And then you can start a conversation. So you can ask SEC Insights questions around that documentation which we had given. So this is the form 10K publicly available for Apple. So if we ask it, um, what are the biggest discussed risks? I hope it won't fail like the last demo. So what this, this is doing in the background is that it's taking that question. And as we saw earlier, it is converting this form 10K into chunks or vectors of information, embedding that, and then taking that the system prompt and the query, passing it to the large language model, and then getting an answer from there for the question that we have asked. So based on the form 10K for 2020, SEC Insights believes that the biggest discussed risk mentioned was includes shortages, nuclear power plant accidents, industrial accidents, terrorist attacks, so on and so forth. So that you don't have to read through the whole form 10K, uh, which is written in language which hackers and engineers don't really understand, the businessy language of investors and the financial and the business world. So now engineers have built tools in which you can talk to such documents in natural language. Okay. So that is another example. Custom GPTs was another sample use case. Uh, so you can you can build custom GPTs on top of OpenAI. And um, the, obviously this is paid, but obviously also it is very simple to use and configure. So those are the sam sample use cases. In my own practical um, experience, we have built customer support chatbots, which is a very famous use case for rag applications. Basically, you can take the documentation from your product, provide it as the context to this rag application, and then users can ask it questions around your product. How to set it up, what's the system requirement, so on. Right? Moving forward, there are obviously limitations as there are to all great technology. First and foremost is the bias. Just like some of us would see this image as two humans and some of us would see the candlestick. Large language models are by design biased because they are based on top of generative AI. And since RAG applications are built on top of this foundation, it could have its own bias affecting the fairness and neutrality of the output. Second is accuracy. So inaccuracies can arise from two pieces. For example, first is if your information is outdated. If, for example, we're looking at SEC Insights and it had um, Form 10K for April from 2020, which is not the most recent or most relevant. 2024 is the most recent or relevant one, for example, right? So you would have to keep on updating the documentation. The second could be if you provide too much information to the large language model or you, you know, try to vectorize the whole Wikipedia in one shot. Generally, that based application study with something like lost in the middle. So it would remember what is at the top, it would remember what is at the bottom, but it would forget pieces in the middle. So thereby losing some accuracy in the output. Third is obviously cost. Um, you would have to use the embedding model, you would have to use the inference model. Uh, with the costly ones like OpenAI's APIs, the cost can easily break up to a thousand dollars that we spend for a customer support chatbot. Last and but not the least Q&A and resources. So again, the QR code, you can scan it, will take you to my website. And also somebody told me that, you know, if you don't have a research paper or a few research papers, it's not really an AI kind of a presentation. So here are a few references which you can read and we can also discuss them out in the chat bar. So that's about it. I think we can open the floodgates for the questions. One who strongly believes Robin is ragging us. I think I have been in famous for that in my college days uh, after today. Uh, also, while people try to type up questions, we'll see if Docker could get our rag app up and running or not, ever. Yeah, so finally it is working again. Okay, we could do the configuration. Hopefully, no, oh, I think. There is an issue with the setup, but okay. We'll give it a few minutes to breathe. Also, I think Zoom is sucking out the resources on my laptop. 
So that is one of the question. Um, that's rag app not working. Is this the first time happening or is it normal? Uh, on my local, this is normal. As I was mentioning that uh, my system is trying to do a couple of things. Uh, run a few Chrome tabs, resume running, and then also it is running this mega 1.98 GB Docker container for this rag app. At the same time, we are trying to configure it. And uh, since I've run it a couple of times, it is trying to reload all the embeddings on my system. So not the first time, also won't happen every time. So uh, next question is, hi, Robin, how did you give input for code snippets for Selenium? Oh, very simple. Uh, you can do a few things. So one is you could start simple like I did, go to the Selenium uh, HQ website. You can find a lot of examples there. Second is any Selenium code base itself. And then third is Stack Overflow. So the few relevant ones for the most common questions like how to handle element not found exception or element not interactable, those I got from Stack Overflow. And just like you could script any website, you can also script Stack Overflow. Now they have started restricting it, but you can be smart and sneaky about it. Uh, the third question that we have is how do we handle the data privacy of customer while building the rag based applications? I think that's a very mature and wise question. Um, so two parts. See, first, if you go through the uh, chat GPT kind of a route, and if you go to open AI's privacy policy, they don't actually use customer data to train their models. But still, some industries where I have worked, like healthcare and all, um, they would really love to have everything behind their own firewalls. In those cases, you can use systems like RAGA and deploy these solutions locally so that you don't have to worry about um, data privacy or anything leaving your firewall environment. It would all be contained inside. Uh, please recommend a learning path for to RAG for a beginner. Okay, um, beginner is very subjective. I think I'm still a beginner. So what you would do is like, if you are passionate, you can go to deeplearning.ai. There are very nice basic courses. Some are one hour, some are few more hours. And if you are really, really passionate, uh, maybe like me, uh, you could go to Coursera and there are slightly longer courses, which would start from slightly more basics like differential calculus and mathematics, and then build up to machine learning and then go to the RAG. So you could take both the routes based on your passion. Yeah, I think before we switch off, uh, there's one last question. Can Git repo instance be used to input uh, RAG for more contextual queries to custom GPT? Yes, that is a very smart question. Something I have personally tried. I just took over Selenium's code base and input it into the local instance of RAG app. It could literally tell me how is um, driver.find by element method implemented. So you could definitely do it. And that is how a lot of these uh, coding co-pilots are implemented. They take the code base as the reference, vectorize it, and then it can answer your questions. So very smart, try it out, it can be done. I think that answers uh, most of our questions that uh, that have been raised. So thanks, Robin, for sharing your experience with us today. Uh, hopefully the RAG app works soon. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.